So you've been thinking about it for weeks, months, maybe even years, and you finally decided it's time to pull the trigger and make that LS swap of your dreams happen, but you don't know where you should even start on finding that engine that's perfect for your build. Well, right here, right now, we're about to go into how to find the right LS for your swap. If you've landed on this video, then obviously you've already done the hard legwork of figuring out you're not doing a Hemi, you're not doing a TDI or something crazy, you're just doing a tried true LS swap. Most likely because it's well documented and there are adapter kits all over the internet that makes this job super easy, which is great for you. But which engine do you want for your build? Well, you have a lot of options. You have everything from the 4.8, 5.3, 5.7, 6.0, 6.2. You've got Gen 3s, you got Gen 4s, you got Gen 5s if you got money. In this idea, we're gonna be working with more of a budget ideology because most of us are working on a tight income stream for our builds. So I wanna throw a couple of those options out of the window right away. If you're working on a budget, I want you to take two things in mind. The 4.8 liter does not have enough cost variation between buying a 4.8 and buying a 5.3 to make it worth the savings. So I want you to throw the 4.8 out the window and I want you to stick with a 5.3 and above. On the other side of that, the 6.2 is rarely found available, and when it is found, usually that person is gonna want a premium for that engine, and rightfully so. But if you're working on a budget, go ahead and throw that 6.2 out the window because you're probably not gonna find one at the right price point. If you do, you're a winner. Now we've already thrown out the low end and we've thrown out the high end. Now we have to look at the dead center, the 5.7. Now this is a Corvette engine and it usually comes at an absolute premium. It's all aluminum, it's an amazing engine. But because of that, you're gonna pay an amazing price whenever you find one. Very seldom are you gonna find a 5.7 laying around in a junkyard that they're gonna give to you for 500 bucks and you walk out a happy camper. Almost never happens. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the 5.7 out the window because still we are working on a budget. Now, what does that leave us with? We have the 5.3 and the 6.0 is what I want you to primarily focus on. Now we're down to the primary focus of this video and that's where you should be looking to find these engines at the proper price point for your budget build. Now, if you're looking for a 5.3 or a 6.0, they are in a number of vehicles very available. Now, the 5.3 is way more popular than the 6.0 in usage, not in horsepower. The 6.0 is the dream build because you're kind of at that sweet spot. You have great power, great torque right out of the gate for the higher displacement, and there is a little bit of a price elevation because of that. Very rarely do you find one at the perfect price, and so if you can find a 6.0 in a 2500, 3500 truck, or in a Denali, say a Tahoe Denali, you can find those every once in a while that someone doesn't realize what the engine is inside and they sell it off at the proper price. But most of the time, you're going to pay about $1,000 more just for that higher displacement. Now, usually on most of those 6.0s versus a 5.3, you're looking about an extra 50 pounds of torque. And th that's great, that's awesome. They actually respond to power adders even better because of the higher displacement. But once again, we're working on a budget, so I'm primarily going to be shopping for the 5.3 liter because they can be found all over the place. It's super easy to come across. 5.3 is your bread and butter, what you're probably gonna be working with. If you can find a 6.0 in the right price point, snag it. They're out there, they're just a little harder to find. Now, where are you gonna buy that engine? Well, you have a bunch of different options. The top tier being a crate engine. That crate engine is going to cost you the most amount of money. And if you have the money for a crate engine, odds are you had the money for the high-end 6257 or that 60 anyway. That's probably not why you're here. Now, crate engines can be had directly from GM and they are fresh, new engines, not rebuilt. They are brand new production, come to you, never used. And with that, they come with a hefty price point. Now, GM does not even give you prices on their website unless you start requesting a quote, and that should tell you something in itself. But from what I've seen online and from other people who have gone this route, you're going to start anywhere around the 4,000 for bare bones, all the way up to 20,000 plus for the highest end of engines. Now, with that, you have to remember that you're not getting the full package. You're getting a long block. You're not getting the accessories, the 
brackets, the harnesses, the coil pack. You're not getting the manifolds. You're not getting all the other things that you're going to be needing for an LS swap. So if you've got the money for a crate engine, obviously you're probably going to have the money for upgrading everything else. And if you've got it, spend it. That's awesome. Once again, we're on a budget build. Now the next tier down from your crate engine is going to be a production remanufactured engine. This is coming from all of your companies like Premier and others that their entire career is taking worn out engines, bringing them in and refurbishing them and reselling them. Now this is much less expensive than a brand new crate engine and you do have the added benefit of it being brought back to you and oftentimes they come with a warranty. That is a really great choice, but you're still going to be spending around $2,000 and up depending on who and where and what you want in that engine. You're still a little higher on the budget and I think we can do better than that and still have amazing results. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look right past the rebuilt engines. We're gonna keep going down the list. Next option you're gonna have is your pre-pulled engine, most likely found on either Facebook or websites like carpart.com where they source these these engines, they find them, or maybe it's a private seller who's already pulled this engine and they're selling it to you. This is the next tier down on price, but it's a whole nother level up on risk. When you go and get these things, if they're already pulled, you have no way of verifying that the engine is actually in a good working order. So you're taking a risk that any sensors, solenoids, you may have spun rod bearing. There are a couple things that you can look at when you go look at these engines, which would be really smart if you're looking about going this route. So we'll cover those really quick before we move on. You need to be bringing a socket to be able to turn over that crankshaft. If they don't let you inspect that engine, you do not need to be buying it. A lot of these people are going to say runs great, amazing condition, 100,000 miles, uh, $1,500. Because usually the price range for these pre-pulled engines are anywhere between $1,000 and $2,500. And this isn't really a horrible price, but it's also not as cheap as you could get a proper engine. And you're bringing in a lot of that risk factor because they've already pulled it, you're taking their word on it. And unless you're bringing all the tools or they're allowing to give you some tools to do a leak down test, uh, unless they're able to crank it before they pull it, you're risking a lot there taking someone else's word that it's in amazing shape. And you have to remember that. And you're also paying that extra value. Now for a 5.3, they do tend to go between $1,000 to $1,500 pre-pulled online, carpart.com. If you're looking at the 6.0, then you're probably looking around the $2,000 to $2,500 mark. And this is about standard is what I've been seeing over the last year, six months. Uh, that's what things have been going for online at this time in 2023. Now, if you're going to go look at one of these engines, definitely bring a socket to make sure you can turn over that crankshaft, make sure the engine turns over no problem and that it doesn't have bind in it. You risk the possibility of the crankshaft being bad, camshaft being bad, which isn't the worst case, spun bearings, which is a horrible case. But what I'm saying is that if these engines are beat up and you just spent top dollar on them, well, moderate top dollar, $1,500, $2,500. If you're taking the risk factor of spending $1,500, $2,500 on a full engine set from someone, you should expect that it's in proper rebuilding working order, not that the entire thing's gonna have to be stripped down and you're gonna have to buy a new crankshaft, buy a new cam. There are a lot of options that you know right out of the gate, the engine is in perfect shape without taking that risk factor and spending the extra money. There's a lot of options, tons of stock everywhere. Everyone's selling an engine these days. So they are able to be had, but you're also paying a little bit of an extra price because they've pulled it, they've done the legwork, they sourced the engine, and you're gonna pay them for that. And let's see, the next point in this video I'd like to make is, uh, oh, click that like button. It helps more people find this video in the future. Thanks. Now you're at the bare bottom of your price point, and that is the junkyard pull. Tons of people go this route, and that's a good and a bad thing for two different reasons. One, because junkyard pulls are so popular right now and the LS is absolutely the most popular swap. You look online and you see all these people selling LS engines, guess where most of them got them? They went junkyard diving, they did the legwork, they pulled that engine before you could get to it. Now, I've spent the past six months just scouring the internet and watching junkyards local to me, trying to get the best price and trying to get a jump on an LS before someone else could get to the yard before it. In all six months, I only beat someone 
one time to the junkyard first thing in the morning before everyone else could get to it and pick it out of that engine bay. That's how popular these things are right now. They're going like crazy. My local junkyard actually posts every Tuesday what the new cars are coming on the lot Everyone knows this, and so they know that on Wednesday morning, there's gonna be a brand new Tahoe or a brand new 2500 or a brand new Suburban sitting in the lot with an engine in it, and every one of these guys races to the gate at 7 a.m., and they're there with all their tools ready to pluck that engine because they know that that engine will bring them a premium if they can get it out of the lot first. Part two is not only is that engine harder to get to before everybody else, but you're starting at a price point of $450. So yes, it is at the bottom of your price point, but here's something a lot of people don't think about. For $450, that engine is coming to you with the only knowledge, if you know to think about it, of whether it turns over or not. You turn that crankshaft, you know it's not frozen up, well, there's a good working engine. Hopefully it's salvageable. And once you've dropped the oil, I hope you do this before you pull your engine, check the oil, check the coolant, Look at the status of everything. Was it hit in the front end? You may want to scour away from that. It could have issues if the body contacted the engine. If not, consider it. You know it was running when it was wrecked. But I still say that to say this. You need to take a lot of consideration into that $450 engine that you're pulling out of the junkyard. You still don't know, did it have lifter tick when it, when it was wrecked? How bad was that engine running? Were the cool packs misfiring? Did it have all kinds of overheating issues right before they wrecked it and put it into the yard? Or if that vehicle has no damage and it's in a junkyard, you really need to be skeptical because it may have been donated to the junkyard because the engine blew and they were just tired of fiddling with it. So the junkyard is still your most popular and lowest cost option, but the cost isn't always as upfront as you might think it is. Now, I told you locally that an engine from a junkyard is going for about $450, and that is correct. As of right now, their price point is any engine short of a diesel that you pull out of the junkyard is $450. Now, once you go to that front register and you go to pay for that engine, if you pull the computer, the wire harness, the gas pedal, if you're using a drive-by wire LS, if you pull the accessory drives with the alternator, the water pump, the power steering, if you take all those with it, they add every bit of that up at the register. And now when I did the math and I talked with the junkyard about this, after including the transmission and all the accessories that would normally go with an LS, including the computer, the harness and everything, I was looking at roughly $900 out the door with taxes and cores for that setup. Now that went very quickly from 450 to almost 900 all of a sudden, you're almost at the same price as what people are selling these for online anyway. So what is the option that you should be going for? I skipped one and here it is. And this is the one I want you to look at. What I want you to do is I want you to go online. I want you to go to Facebook Marketplace because that tends to be the most popular right now. Go on there and I want you to look for Tahoes, Suburbans, Chevy 2500s, anything that came with an LS in it. And I say those because they tend to be the most popular option right now. Now, but I want you to go look for those on Marketplace and I want you to look at the lowest valued ones. Now these are going to be your 99 to 2006 most likely. These are the bare bones market. They're completely worn out. Most of them are high mileage. Some little thing may have gone wrong on them, but the owner it just wants to get out from under it and they don't care what they get out of it. And this is the sweet spot that we're gonna get into. If you look online and you're finding these older LSs, the Gen 3s from the early 2000s to 2006, you're gonna find that there are tons of them out there that are higher mileage, they're worn out, beaten up bodies, and people are trying to let these things go from 500 to 1,000 bucks all day long. Some of them maybe have worn out transmissions, scratch that, 90% of them have worn out transmissions if they're rocking the 4L60, and when that happens, Tons of owners decide that it's not worth the cost of replacing or rebuilding that transmission and they want that thing out of their yard. Anything sub $1,000 is a steal and here's why. If you pick up that entire vehicle and you pull the LS, well guess what? Now, if you're running a drive-by wire, you also have the gas pedal, you have all the wiring, the modules, the computer, the harness, you have all the accessory drives that you can potentially reuse, you have coil packs, you have everything you need for an LS swap 
right there in front of you. So if you would rather build your own harness rather than spend a thousand bucks plus on an aftermarket harness, then that option's right there in front of you. All you have to do is the legwork of building it up. The next point I want you to think about is the fact that you're not pulling something out of a junkyard that's muddy, nasty. You're rolling around in where somebody peed next to a car just 15 minutes before. Instead, you're taking this thing back to your place where you can work on it on your own time and comfort. And if you're doing an LS swap, I have a little bit of suspicion that you have a little extra room around your place where you can work. Not everybody has to have an entire shop. So if you're wanting to do an LS swap, you could pick up a vehicle, pull the engine, all the accessories that you need, and have that thing donated to a scrapyard before your wife can finalize the divorce. Ask me how I know. Let me give you the perfect example of this. Me. I practice what I preach on this YouTube channel. And the way I sourced my LS was I went onto Facebook Marketplace and I found someone selling a full running Tahoe for a steal. They wanted $900 for this Tahoe. The body was fairly beat up, but the engine had been replaced at 50,000 miles ago. It was an amazing running engine. And the fact that I could drive it, run it, I could rev it to the rev limiter and they didn't even care, $900 was absolutely worth it. Now, this did come with a weak transmission. Third and fourth gear tended to slip in this, and that's why he was letting this go. Now, this isn't really a big deal to me because I'm actually swapping to the Turbo 400 anyways, so the transmission was not really important to me unless I decided to use it for a core. When you look at it in the fact that $900 for the entire vehicle, I bring it back to my place, I pulled it on my own time, I made sure I got every component I needed, that the wire harness was not strained or cut, that all the parts that were on it worked flawlessly. Now that I'm done pulling the engine, the body is going to the scrapyard, which means I'm gonna be getting a couple hundred dollars back. So we're really looking at $600, $700 conservatively for this engine. I Not only did I turn the vehicle over to know that the engine wasn't seized, but I drove it knowing that it ran flawlessly with no oil leaks, no misfires, no check engines, $600, $700 for that working engine's good enough. Now, once I pull the engine out of my TJ, which is still a working four liter, I'm gonna be selling that for just a couple hundred bucks to somebody who needs it. So we're really looking at 400 bucks for an engine, transmission if I wanted to rebuild it, a wire harness, AC components, alternator, power steering, the gas pedal, and the module that goes with it. And I know the condition that every bit of this is in. I know it hasn't been destroyed, and I know the, the oil that came out of it is clean with no sediment. The coolant was clean and clear, so I know there's no problems there. There's no sign of any problems. I've already started cleaning this engine up. In the coming videos, I wanna have a lot more LS content coming up. So if you're interested in LSs, Jeeps, anything off-road, consider subscribing because I'm going to have all that coming up in the coming videos. Guys, I hope this is helpful. If so, consider clicking the subscribe button and hit that like button just because it helps this video find more people. I'm Dan with Mud Tire Media. Have a great day in the shop and I'll see you on the trail.